Hey guys, this is Max Steinberg with Saber Sim, and I'm doing a video that's mostly actually focused on what we do after we've built our lineups and how to adjust our exposures in a way that's going to help our lineups and not, you know, tinker so much that we're actually hurting or doing something against what Saber Sim's lineup builder really is doing well. And so I've actually already made adjustments. As you can see, some of these players are green or red, which suggests that they are higher or lower than what SaberSim suggests, or SaberSim suggests, what their base projection is, according to Saber. And if you want to know more about how I do adjustments, you're welcome to watch my previous video that you can find on our website. But for this video, I'm actually not going to focus on it and focus more on what I'm looking for when I'm looking at the lineups we've built. So one thing to emphasize is that's really cool about Saber Sim is I've built 50 lineups right now for this Thursday slate and Saber does not just build 50 lineups when I ask you to build 50 lineups. It actually builds a thousand, which is this total pool size here. And what that means is I can adjust my lineups on the fly very quickly and easily. Uh, so let's say I thought, okay, I don't want as much Eliza or Hernandez. I can just set this number to 50, and then suddenly my Eliza or Hernandez percentage will be back at maximum 50 exposure. So you can just adjust your lineups really quickly. But I'm not going to do that at the moment. I'm going to talk about why I would actually adjust someone's exposures and when to do it and when to not do it. So. The first thing I want to emphasize is I have a mantra when using SaberSim and SaberSim's lineup builder, and the mantra is, in builder we trust. And what that means is, is I'm gonna mostly just default to the opinion that the builder is doing what is actually optimal here. And I'm looking to be more of the quality control person of the lineup builder. I'm just making sure that none of this looks particularly strange or suboptimal in some way. I just want it to look like something that you'd intuitively get. Um, and maybe I'm not going to fully understand it, but it, what I want it to do is, is look like something that makes sense to me. And what does that mean? What does intuitively looking good or make sense to me mean? So looking good to me means um, one, that the largest exposure players are the ones that have a good combination of highest projection, best value, and lowest ownership. And, you know, there's some things that I'm just not going to intuitively get, like upside, which Sabre is going to quantify a lot better than I do. But the things should, the numbers, uh, the exposure numbers should really just make sense in that way. They should have either high projection or good value, and the ownership projection should be pretty low in general. And so looking at this here, uh, one thing I'm immediately noticing is we're getting a lot of Yankees in Toronto, and we're getting a lot of Eliza Hernandez. So with Matthew Boyd, first I'm going to talk about something that I really am happy with, is we're getting a lot of Matthew Boyd, and that makes a lot of sense to me. I actually boosted him, and one of the reasons is Kansas City has a road game. It's a back-to-back -back road game, and they got on the airplane, I think, at 2 a.m. last night. Thank you, Danny Steinberg, for the hot tip. And I think lack of sleep really can affect um, offenses, and so I think this is a particularly good matchup for Matthew Boyd, who I like quite a bit, and Sabre does too. I really didn't boost him that much. And so he's the most expensive pitcher on the slate, um, if you look at right here. But he is close to one of the best. I mean, obviously, Chris Sale is one of the best. But in terms of ownership, he actually is much on the much lower side. So I think it makes sense that since my build settings do maximize for um, ownership fade, that we're getting a lot of him. So that makes a lot of sense. So with Eliza Hernandez, we get him 88%, and my gut goes, oh, I, I'm not sure if I love that. But if we look at it a little more, we can see, let's see if this looks good according to our rules. So does he have high projection? No. But does he have a good value? 
Yes, he actually has a really good value. He's only 5k on DraftKings, and we're usually pretty conservative with innings pitch projections, so I really don't think this is a bad innings pitch projection. Obviously, he's at home. Miami's a pitcher at park, so being at 5k, his projection doesn't need to be that high for him to be very usable, and I think that's just what's going on here. Plus, his ownership projection is pretty low, so it actually makes sense that we're going to get this exposure And I actually am just going to, usually with pitchers, I don't mind getting really high exposure because they're a lower variance player and usually your best pitcher is going to be your best pitcher by a few points of value, whereas with hitters, they're going to be a lot closer together. So I think this makes sense. I think given, you know, he does have some opportunity to just completely eat it this game, I'm going to lower my max exposure a little bit here and just make sure I don't get too much of him. But we're going to be way, way leveraged on the field, so I think I'm fine with getting 70 or even 60% here and still getting a lot of edge if he is, in fact, um, a really great value. So the other thing is I'm going to do with hitters. So the first thing I'm looking for is, is there a hitter here that... I think we're sort of underrating ownership-wise that we're getting a lot. And actually, I don't think that's the case. I don't think Toronto's going to be that high-owned. Maybe Bo Bichette will get some ownership. He's gotten off to a really hot start, so maybe it would make sense to lower a bit because I think we are underrating his ownership. And I have two choices. I can just do that by going back here and adjusting his ownership um, in the actual before in the actual projections or i can do it the quick way which i'm going to do here given we do have want to be considerate of time is i can just lower his exposure which i'm completely fine with and maybe give him 50 percent instead and then i'm taking into account that we probably underrated his ownership a little bit but i did actually boost some of the new york ownership so despite the fact we are getting a lot of new york players i do think it's pretty fine given um i think their ownerships do actually make sense here and so one thing that saber has that's really cool is we're not just we we can look at more than just individual player ownership we can actually look at team ownership so we look at team stacks and We're seeing basically four teams we're getting. We're getting Toronto, New York, Chicago, and Cincinnati, which all makes sense. There's not really any other team, aside from maybe Boston and the Los Angeles Angels, that really have as much upside as these teams intuitively, and I think Saber probably agrees, which is why we're only getting these teams. So I could make adjustments here. Um, and the, I think the one that I'm a little wary of is New York. They've been hitting a lot of home runs lately, and I think people just really like them. Aaron Judge is actually only 4,500. And so I don't love the New York stack from a GP standpoint. I think that it's possible we're underrating ownership percentage a little bit here. And Toronto does have a decent bullpen, So I'm actually going to limit the New York stack a little bit and maybe get um, 35% exposure to that stack instead of 50 because I really am just really wary of them being overowned. And my personal opinion is is I really don't like having overowned stacks because with hitters, they can just fail so easily. And so if we are right and... Aaron Judge gets 30, 30, 35%, 40% ownership, and some of these other guys get high ownership. I'm really just happy just not using New York and just hoping they fail. And they probably will fail like over 50% of the time, so it doesn't feel like a big deal. I do really like the Chicago stack. So from a standpoint, as I think Alex Wood on Cincinnati, he's come back from injury and just doesn't look as good as... Um, he's been in the past, lost some velocity on that fastball. So it's great hitting weather as well. So I really do like Chicago quite a bit. And looking at this now, we have hitters that are high projected or good value. We have our pitchers. We lowered Elazio Hernandez a little bit, but he's such good value. I think it allows us to pay up for some of these hitters. And I'm happy to get them, even though it's going to be pretty contrarian. 
And we have a good amount of variety, and I do like having that variety at hitter. Um, it's only an eight-game slate, but we do have a pretty nice balance of stacks. And looking out at the other teams, I just can't imagine that there's anything wrong here. I think Sabre's correctly assessing that these are the teams with the highest upside. So in general, this looks good, according to my definition I explained earlier, and I think I'm happy with this build. So as you can see, I really didn't make that many adjustments. I capped the exposures of a couple of players and capped the exposure of one of our biggest stacks because of ownership. And if I was using more time, I'd probably just raise their ownerships in the builder and then, or in the projections before, and then just let the builder do its thing. But given it's, you know, it's getting closer to 4 p.m. Pacific time and I don't have the time, I, I like having this option of just capping that max exposure to lower those Yankee stacks to the way I want. And that's all, that's it. That's all, that's all I'm doing in terms of the quality control aspect of our lineup building. So I know a lot of you probably are watching this video and you tinker a lot to, well, maybe not a lot of you, but I'm sure some of you are, love tinkering with max and min exposures and getting certain players and getting a little bit of those players you want. But I think in general, the better approach is going to be adjust the projections the way you see fit if you're still not getting the players you want or you still are getting too many of the players you want maybe or you don't want um, maybe take a harder look and maybe lower and raise those players a little more but once you're done with that you really should not be adjusting your player exposures that much in my opinion um, I think you're going to be better off trusting what Sabersim does because they are going to build lineups from an ownership and upside standpoint that you simply are not going to be able to optimize for at all when you're trying to manipulate these builds. So um, I'm going to submit these lineups onto DraftKings, and I got to go make sure everything's good before lock. I hope that you enjoyed this video and you learned a little something. As always, if you have any questions, you can tweet me at Max J. Steinberg. You can also ask any question you want in the Slack channel, uh, the SaberSim Slack channel. So again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Good luck with your lineups tonight and uh, have some fun.